Hi, in this class we will continue our study of numbers and the next topic that we are going to see is known as HCF or GCD. Well, now by HCF we mean the highest common factor and the other name for HCF is GCD where GCD stands for greatest common divisor. So in this class we will talk about the highest common factor that is HCF and the greatest common divisor that is GCD. Note that HCF and GCD are the same entity. So HCF and GCD are two different names for the same value. Now let us see what we mean by HCF and GCD. Well, we know what factors of a number are. So if we want to find factors of a certain number, we will say that factors of a certain number are all the numbers that divide that given number giving a zero remainder. So if we have a number such as 16, then 16 is divisible by 1. So 16 is clearly divisible by 1. So 16 for 16, 1 is a factor of 16 because 1 divides 16. Now if you look at the number 2, then again 2 also divides 16 leaving a zero remainder. But 3 does not divide 16 and so 3 is not a factor. So here in the first column we are writing the number and in the second column we are writing the factors of 16 or rather the factors of this given number. So if the number is 16, the factors are 1, 2, 3 is not a factor of 16 but 4 is a factor of 16 because 4 times 4 is 16 and so the remainder when 16 is divided by 4 is equal to 0 and so 4 is also a factor of 16. The next number 5 is not a factor, 6 is also not a factor because 6 does not divide 16, 7 again is not a factor because it does not divide 16 but 8 divides 16 and so 8 is a factor of 16. You will realize that after 8, 9 does not divide 16, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 also fail to divide 16 but the next number that divides 16 is 16 itself. So now we have seen that the factors of 16 are 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. So we found out the factors of 16 pretty easily. Let us now try to find the factors for the other number say 40. So now we are looking at the number 40 and we want to find the factors of 40. Now because 40 is an easy number to factorize, we can directly write down the factors of 40. Clearly 1 is a factor of 40 because 1 divides 40. 2 is also a factor of 40 because again 2 divides 40. 3 is not a factor of 40 but 4 is. 5 eighths of 40 so 5 is also a factor. 6 fails to divide 40 and so 6 is not a factor of 40. 7 also is not a factor but 8 is a factor because 8 5 is a 40. So now if you look at the next number 9 it is not a factor but 10 is a factor. Likewise 11 is not a factor, 12 is not a factor, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 also are not factors and so the next factor of 40 that we get is 20. Well, continuing in this manner you will realize that the next factor of 40 is 40 itself. And so these are all the factors of 40 that is 40 does not have any factors other than these. Now we were going to learn what is the highest common factor or the greatest common divisor. And if you look at this term highest common factor, here we have the term factor and so we found out factors of these two numbers. And suppose we want to find out highest common factor of 16 and 40, so I will write this as HCF in the bracket of 16 and 40. And if I want to find the HCF of 16 and 40, I will look at all the factors of the two numbers and I will come or I will take that factor which is highest and common to both these. So here the term is highest common factor. So I am looking at the factors, then I will take the common factors and then I will take the highest of the common factors. So if you take the factors, there are these. But if you take the common factors, then 1 is a common factor. Similarly, 2 is a common factor. Similarly, 4 is also a common factor and finally 8 is also a common factor. And so if you were to check all the common factors, they are 1, 2, 4 and 8 but we are interested in the highest common factor and so the highest of these four numbers is 8 and so we will say that the highest common factor of 16 and 40 is equal to 8. Well, now greatest common divisor is same as HCF so this can also be called the GCD or the greatest common divisor of 16 and 40. So HCF and GCD mean the same thing. Now let us understand this term greatest common divisor. We saw that factors of a given number are the divisors of that number. So 1 is a divisor of 16, 2 is a divisor of 16. So in fact factors can also be called divisors. So factors and divisors are the same terms. And so now 
if you were to find the greatest common factor, then first you will look at the divisor. That is greatest common divisor. So if you look at all the divisors, then I have already circled all the divisors, or rather I have circled only the common divisors. So first I wrote down all the divisors of the numbers, then I circled the common divisors, and then I'm choosing the greatest of the circle terms. And the greatest term here among 1, 2, 4, and 8 is 8. And so we say that the highest common factor, which is the same as the greatest common divisor of these two numbers is equal to 8. So we've now obtained a result that HCF of 16 and 40, which is same as GCD of 16 and 40 is equal to 8. Now, in this case, we wrote down the factors of 16 and 40. So we actually wrote down the factors of 16 and 40 and then found out the common factors and then found the factor that was the greatest among the common factors. And this method of finding the HCF is known as the method of listing all factors. So in fact, this is the first method of finding HCF or GCD of two numbers and the method is called the method of listing down all the factors. So what do we mean by HCF? Well, HCF is nothing but the highest common factor of two or more given numbers. Now here we had considered the example of two numbers 16 and 40 but this concept can be extended to more than two numbers also. And so we have seen what we mean by highest common factor. Well, so now we've seen what we mean by the highest common factor and the greatest common divisor, which is the same thing basically. So now we will look at another example. Suppose I ask you to find the highest common factor, which is the same as the greatest common divisor of 96, 180 and 192. How will you proceed? So now I've given you these three numbers. Instead of two, I have given you three numbers that is 96, 180 and 192. And I have to find the highest common factor of these three numbers. Now, the method that we learned so far was by listing all the factors. But because the numbers were small, we could easily list the factors. In this case, the numbers are not very small. And so it will be a little difficult for us to list all the factors. And it will be very time consuming as well. So to deal with large numbers, when we are dealing with HCF of numbers, what we do is we follow another method. And this method is called HCF by prime factorization. So we are talking about HCF or GCD, which is the same thing by the method of prime factors or prime factorization. So this is called the method of prime factors. So how do we use this method and find the HCF of given numbers? Well, the first thing you do is you write down 96 like this and find out all the prime factors of 96. So we have taken the first number 96 and we are now trying to find all the prime factors. And we know the method of finding prime factors of a given number. Now, because 2 divides 96, I will write a 2 here. And 2 into 48 is 96. So 48 will come over here. I will continue this because 48 is again divisible by 2. And so I write a 2 here. And then 48 divided by 2 will give me 24, which is written here. Now 24 again is divisible by 2. And so we write a 2 here. And 24 divided by 2 gives us 12. So here comes a 12. Now. 12 is again divisible by 2, so I write a 2 here, and then I get a 6 here, which is divisible by 2 again, which leaves 3. And finally, if I divide 3 by itself, I will get the quotient as 1 and remainder as 0. So I have now completed finding all the prime factors of 96. And now that I have found all the prime factors of 96, I will list all the prime factors here. So I am talking about the number 96. And the factors that I've got are 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and 3. So I will write 96 as 2 into 2 into. So this 2, this 2, then comes this 2, then comes this one, then comes this one. And finally, we have a 3, which is also multiplied. So I've written 96 as a product of these factors. Note that each of these factors is prime because 2 is prime and 3 is also prime. So we've said that we've performed the prime factorization of 96. Now in a similar manner, the next number is 180 and I have to factor this number 180. So now if you look at 180 and if you want to factor this number, again I will divide it by 2 first because 2 is 2 divides 180 and 2 times 90 is 180 so 90 comes here. 90 again is divisible by 2 so we get 45 here which is divisible by 3 and we get 15 here which is again divisible by 3 which leaves us with 5 and 5 is divisible by itself to leave us 1 here as the quotient. So now I've expressed 180 as a product of these terms. And if you write 180 as a product of these terms, you see that 180 can be written as this 2 multiplied by this 2 multiplied by this 3, then again a 3, and then finally a 5. 
and this is where we stop for 180. In a similar manner, if you were to factor 192, you will realize that 192 by a similar method of factorization comes equal to 2 times, 2 times, 2 times, 2 times, twice of, twice into 3. So if you were to factor 192 in a similar manner, you will get these factors of 192. Now again note that all these numbers are prime numbers and so we have obtained prime factors. And so in this way, we have found the prime factors of each of these three numbers, which HCF or GCD we wanted to find. And now the thing we do is, we select all the common factors that are common to all these. Note that 2 is common to all these, so I will select 2 here. Likewise, again a 2 is common to all 3, so I will select a 2 again. But now note that 2 is common to only the first and the last one, but not to 3, so I will not include it here. What I will do is, I will look at the common factors that are there in all the three. Now, if you look at this number three, it is common in the first prime factorization, it is common in the second also, and it is common in the third also. And so, if I collect a three, you will realize that three is common to all these factors of all these numbers. So, I can write two is common to these three, two is again common to these three, and then three is also common to these three. And now, the simply the only step that remains is finding the multiplication of each of these common terms which is taken only once. So I am taking each of these terms only once because they occur once in each of the three and so we write 2 multiplied by, so this 2 comes from these three 2's, then I write these three 2's will give me another 2 and then these three 3's will give me another 3. So what I have done is I have first found the prime factors of all the numbers, then I took only those factors that are common to all three. And then those common factors were written only once and all such common factors were multiplied and so we get 2 into 2 into 3 which is equal to 12. And so I say that now this 12 is nothing but the HCF or the GCD of these three numbers. So I will finally write down that HCF or GCD of these three numbers 96, 180 and 192 is equal to 12. And so this will be reported as 12 is equal to HCF of 96, 180 and 192 and this is also known as the GCD as we had seen of 96, 180 and 192. So we have now seen two methods to find GCD of given numbers. The first method was by, was by listing all the factors which was huge, useful for smaller numbers. The second method was by prime factorization of the given numbers wherein we write all the prime factors and we find all the prime factors and then take only the common factors that are common to all the numbers only once. Now this method is again called finding prime factors that is finding HCF by using prime factors. Well there is yet another method that we can use to find HCF which is also the GCD of given numbers and the method is known as method of continued division. So let us see how we can use the method of continued division and find the HCF of given numbers. 658 and 940, continue, right? Continue. Now suppose if you want to find the HCF of these two numbers, that is 658, continue, and 940. So now we are dealing with these two numbers where we want to find the HCF that is same as the GCD of these two numbers 658 and 940. So I will write this as equal to GCD because GCD and HCF we saw are the same thing. And now to find the HCF or GCD of these two numbers I will always start with the larger number. So in this method of continued division I start with the larger number and divide that larger number by the smaller number. Now in this case the larger number is 940 which will be included here and the smaller number is 658 which will be written here. So I am dividing the larger by the smaller and because this is not exactly divisible I will have to stop at 1. So if I write 658 into 1 then I will get a 658 again and I will subtract this 658 from 940 as we do in normal division and so the answer that I will get here is 282. Now in the second step this 282 will now become my divisor. So earlier my divisor was 658 and now my divisor is 282. So I will take this 282 and make it my divisor of the next step. And what will be the dividend of the next step? Well, this 
282 that was remainder now becomes the divisor so i will take 282 here and then i will write this term which was earlier the divisor inside the dividend and so 658 will be written here and so i will write 658 here and now i will perform division of 658 by 282 so what did we do well first we took the larger number and divided by 658 wherein we got a remainder 282 in the second step this remainder become our new divisor and the old divisor became our new dividend and so we now performed 658 divided by 282 now note that if i multiply 282 by 2 then i will get 564 because 282 multiplied by 3 gives us a number larger than this and so i will have to stop at 2 and now if i subtract the second number from the first i get 8 minus 4 is equal to 4 then I get 15 minus 9 or 15 minus 6 here which is equal to 9 and finally I have a 5 minus 5 that becomes 0. So I get 94 here. Now the procedure will be repeated again. What I do is my old remainder now becomes my new divisor. So this 40 or 94 now becomes my new divisor. So every time I find the remainder I make that remainder as my new divisor. So here also my remainder was 94 and so this remainder is now made by new divisor. So this 94 will come over here and what will happen to the dividend? Well, in the previous case we had seen that our old divisor becomes our new dividend. Now here our old divisor was 282 and so that will become our new dividend. So 282 will come over here inside and so I will get 282 here. And now I will realize that if I divide 282 by 94, what do I get? Well, if I perform 94 multiplied by 3, then you will realize that 94 into 3 is exactly equal to 282. And so I end up with a 282 here. And now because the remainder is 0, I will stop the process right here. And I will report this quotient or rather this divisor as my answer for the HCF of these two numbers. And now that I have found the remainder 0 finally, I will take this divisor and report this as the HCF of my two numbers. So I will finally write the result that the highest common factor of 658 and 940 is equal to 94. And because HCF and GCD are the same, I will also write this is also the GCD of these two numbers 658 and 940. So now we have learned what we mean by GCD and HCF which are the same thing and we have also learned three methods to find the HCF also the GCD of numbers. The first method was for by listing all the factors which is applicable for smaller numbers. The second case was by finding HCF GCD using prime factorization and the third case is finding HCF GCD by continued division.